For God gives the Spirit without limits. And it's so amazing here. Aren't you so grateful that you worship a God that has no limits? No limits in his love for you. No limits for his sacrifice. And the Bible here says that God gives his spirit with no limits. And I believe tonight God wants every single one of us. No matter how the day might have went or even this week or this year, I don't know what's going on in your heart. But God knows that tonight you can empty yourself of yourself. So that the word of God, the power of God can fill you up with God's spirit so we can do the things that God wants us to do in this generation. The title of our lesson here tonight is simply Limitless. You know, 2011, uh, Bradley Cooper, everybody know who Bradley Cooper is? He starred in a movie called Limitless. And it's with Robert De Niro. And basically it's a story, thank you bro, how this struggling writer finds this mysterious pill that allows him to access 100% of his brain. Now, you know that's a myth, right? That you can only access 10% of your brain. It's actually not true. Maybe it might be true for some of us. I don't know, but... Uh, <laughs> no shots there, just, you know, amen. But, um, and what happens is Bradley becomes this huge financial wizard because he has 100% of his brain power. But you know what? I believe the Holy Spirit can be like that in all of us. I know all of us who've been baptized disciples, it's exciting that Quaker's getting baptized here tonight. And we know what happens when you get baptized. The Spirit of God comes inside of you, but we know that just because you have the Spirit of God doesn't make you full of the Spirit. And some might be running on 5% or 10% or 15%. But I believe God has his limitless spirit, and he wants you to be filled 100% filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you guys with me here? You know, Bruce Lee once said, if you always put limits on what you can do, physical or anything else, it will spread over into the rest of your life. It will spread into your work, into your morality, into your entire being. There are no limits. There are plateaus, but you must not stay there. You must, you must go beyond them. If it kills you, it kills you. A man must constantly exceed his level. I believe that's what God wants for us here tonight. You know, it's a bit of a halftime right now. We're going into the third quarter of the year. And you might feel like you hit a plateau spiritually. But I believe that God, we're going to our basketball tournament here, God's our coach. And the word of God is the playbook. And he has the perfect play to get you out of those plateaus so you can exceed and become the man that God wants you to become. We have three points here tonight. They come from 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. You have to turn there, but we're going to get our points from that scripture. The Bible says that God gives his spirit. It's not a spirit of being timid, but it's a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. Our three points are simple. Limitless power. Limitless love and limitless discipline. And I really want to just preach my quiet time, something I've been studying out this past couple of days. You know, we are in a very exciting study right now in our Sunday services in the book of Samuel. But I just continued, I just started to continue to read uh, throughout this past couple of days, and I got to Kings and Chronicles. And uh, I wanted to do a little bit of a tale of three kings here tonight. And some of us have read that book, and we know that's talking about David, Saul, and Absalom. But today we're going to have a different tale of three kings. We're going to look at King Uzziah, King Solomon, and King Joash. So let's go to 2 Chronicles 26. King Uzziah is going to teach us about limitless power. So we know from our study in Samuel, Samuel is really the story of God uniting the 12 tribes of Israel under King David. And then we know that David has his son Solomon. I'm going to teach a little bit so we can get the scene of what we're about to read over here with Uzziah. David has his son Solomon, and Solomon has a terrible lust problem. And because of that, the kingdom starts to deteriorate. Now, he has a son, David's grandson. His name is Rehoboam. And Rehoboam was ruthless. And because of his ruthless aggression, the kingdom of God that was unified becomes two separate kingdoms. 
You have 10 tribes that migrate over to the north. They call themselves Israel. They have two tribes over down south, and they call themselves Judah. And the book of Kings is a story of all the bad kings of Israel. In Israel, there was no good kings. In Judah, there's about maybe six or seven or eight good kings. And really, what we see down in Chronicles is basically the chronicles of all the kings of Judah. So most Jewish, uh, what they believe in, most commentators believe that the chron- second, first, second Chronicles were actually the final books of the Jewish chronological Bible. And really, it's supposed to point to the Messianic king coming. And that's why they ignore all of Israel, but just look at Judah, because we know that Jesus Christ is the Lion of Judah. He's supposed to come from the Lion of Judah. But they look and survey through all, all those kings, and they don't find the Messianic king. And it ends with 2 Chronicles 36, where it says, there's now no remedy. And I believe that's also foreshadowing that there's no remedy in this lost world. The only remedy is Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and every single person needs to find Jesus to be saved. Amen. Right now, we're going to look at Uzziah, the 10th king of Judah, had the second longest reign of all the kings of Judah next to Manasseh. And I believe we're going to learn about limitless power. King Uzziah, though, he struggled with something. Before we get into the scriptures, he struggled with something that we all struggle with. It's the one thing that keeps you from celebrating other, other people's accomplishments and achievements. It's the one thing that keeps you from learning new things. It's the one thing that keeps you from saying, I don't know, or saying, I'm sorry. It's the one thing that keeps you from being honest with yourself and others. It's the one thing that keeps you from admitting that you need help. What's that one thing? Pride. Let's just have a show of hands. Who here struggles with pride? Okay, it's not a preaching to you. Now, if you're here, I'm really preaching to you. Okay, that, that's some insidious pride right there. But I want to let you, I want to encourage you guys, every single man, raise your hand. That's awesome. It's great to first acknowledge the problem that we all struggle with pride. And pride will sap the power of God in your life. Psalm 10 verse 4 says, in his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there's no room for God. That's Psalm 10 verse 4. When you're prideful, there's no room for God. And here we're going to see a tale of a king. That was awesome. But he had a terrible, prideful problem. Let's read it. 2 Chronicles 26, verse 1. Hope you guys are all there. All right, let's, let's, let's go. Let's get into it. The Bible says in verse 1, remember our point, limitless power. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in place of his father Amaziah. Shout out to the team ministry, amen. He was the one who rebuilt Elath and restored it to Judah after Amaziah rested with his ancestors. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother's name was Jechaliah. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as father Amaziah had done. He sought God during the day of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fear of God. As long as he sought the Lord, God gave him success. Drop down and off to verse 15. Second sentence. His fame spread far and wide, for he was greatly helped until he became powerful. But after Uzziah became powerful, his pride led to his downfall. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of the incense. Azariah the priest with 80 other courageous priests of the Lord followed him in. They confronted King Uzziah and said, It is not right for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord. That is for the priests of the sons of Aaron who have been consecrated to burn incense. Leave the sanctuary, for you have been unfaithful, and you would not be honored by the Lord God. Uzziah, who had a censer in his hand, ready to burn incense, became angry. While he was raging at the priests in their presence before the incense altar in the Lord's temple, leprosy broke on his forehead. When Azariah, the chief priest, and all the other priests looked at him, they saw that he had leprosy on his forehead, so they hurried him out. Indeed, he himself was eager to leave because the Lord had inflicted him. King Uzziah had leprosy until the day he died. Wow, what a sad tale. Limitless power. 
So here we see Uzziah, who was 16 years old when he became king. And the Bible says that this man was powerful and many talents. And it said that as long as he sought after God, he was successful. You see, you have to understand that God wants to have a successful church. There's nothing in God that wants to have a church that's not successful. Do you want to be about part of something that's not successful? No. I don't want to be unsuccessful. But the thing is, success belongs to God. Yeah. It's all up to God's glory. Yeah. And when you start thinking about how God is going to use you to bless his kingdom, it's going to be a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a blessing. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
because of your pride? Have people been consistently telling you something that you have not been listening to? And you are going to, it's going to lead to your downfall. If you don't tap into the power of God. And we know that 2 Peter says that God's divine power gives us everything we need for a godly life. The word of God gives us everything we need. But if we don't listen to it, our pride will lead to our downfall. Are you holding yourself back here tonight? From the limitless power of God. Now we know how we get power. We talked about it already. Quiet times. Staying with God. Prayer. I really want to give us some challenges here. We got to stay close to God throughout the summer. For whatever reason, there could be a temptation in the summer to just drift away. I want to encourage us to really go after our prayer life and to really be praying for 45 minutes to an hour a day and really be praying for each other in our Bible talks. Like, do you pray by name for every single person in your Bible talk? You know, 1 Samuel 12 talks about it. It says in verse 23, ask me far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. You see, it's a sin to not pray for people. And I want to encourage us, like, let's write down the names of people in our Bible talk. Let's be praying for them. And I think, secondly, what can really take the power of God away from our life? Well, Psalm 32, to turn there, verse 1, it says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent... My bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of the summer. Over here, the psalmist is teaching, this is David. He's saying that blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven. But those who keep silent, or in a sense, conceal sin, will not be blessed. And sadly, it says that, like, their strength will be sapped as in the heat of the summer. You ever been in a hot summer sun? How it just takes your power away? I want to encourage this. Is there any concealed sin in your heart? That's the quickest way to destroy the power of God. Because I believe with all my heart, God wants to unleash his power in the metro coast. I'm excited to be a partner with Stephen Grizz over here in the West region. I'm excited to continue the work over there in the Southland. But we have to have a conviction that it's not us, it's not our power, it's not our might, but it's by the Spirit of God. And I believe what God wants to see here in the Metro, he wants to see the Metro Coast get to daily baptisms by his power. He wants to see the Metro Coast get to one day thousands of disciples. Can you imagine that? Not just the LA Church. God's not a God of small things. God is a God of big things. And the church in the book of Acts, it was a revolutionary church. And that's the church I want to be a part of. I hope that's the church you want to be a part of. And only by the power of God, we can be a part of that church. I want to encourage us. Let's tap into the limitless power of God. Let's learn from Uzziah. Let's not get prideful. Let's stay humble. And God will lift us up. Point number two. Limitless love. Let's learn from Solomon. Let's go to 1 Kings 10. Our second king, Solomon. We know Solomon is a son of David. And we know his shortcomings with lust. But Solomon, during his time, he did have a very encouraging reign. We're going to read about it when Queen, uh, uh, Queen Sheba or the Queen of Sheba comes and interviews him, and he answers with great wisdom. We're going to pick it over here in 1 Kings 10 in verse 6. Verse 6 of 1 Kings 10. The Bible says, She said to the king, The poor I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true, but not believe these things until I came and saw it with my own eyes. Indeed, I even half was told, not even half was told to me. In wisdom and wealth, you have far exceeded the report I heard. How happy your people must be. How happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Praise be to the Lord your God who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's internal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. You know, it's amazing over here we see the report 
when she becomes and they see what was going on in Solomon's kingdom, and so the people are just full of joy, full of happiness. And that's what the church should be like. Every single disciple should be full of joy. And, and, that, and that comes only through God's word. We know from our first, our first study when we did Seeking God, where does joy come from? It comes from experiencing the love of God by seeking him with all your hearts. And I believe from, the, from Genesis to Revelation, this is really God's vision for the church, is to be just like this, joyful and full of limitless love. Let's go to John 15. Where does joy and love come from? Let's go to John 15 over here. In verse 8. The Bible says in verse 8 of John 15. It says, this is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. You know, this is a famous passage we love to, to study out, and we see in this passage over here that it is to God's glory that we bear much fruit. And I believe the fruit it's talking about here is the fruit of making disciples and the fruit of the Spirit. Because, yeah. one, you can't make disciples without the fruit of the Spirit. Um, try doing that, being very impatient and hard-hearted towards people. You're not going to maybe make some disciples, but really have a wrecked-up church if you do it like that. Uh, but really what the scripture teaches over here, it says we have to remain in Christ, and God will make us fruitful. And he says, remain in my love because God's love is limitless. And he says, that's when your joy will be complete. So what does that teach us? You can't be joyful if you're not remaining in Christ. And the byproduct of remaining in Christ will that you will be fruitful. So if you ever see a disciple with a sour face, it's simple. They're not remaining in Christ. And you have to have a, a conviction, being in the church or being a member of the ICC doesn't save you. That doesn't save you. Holding on to the teaching of Jesus Christ, then you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So we have to have a hard check. How is it going remaining in the limitless love of Christ? Because the promise is that you will be joyful. And I believe right now we have some opportunities. I want to talk about a couple opportunities here that we have to really show our limitless love. We already talked about our limitless love for God, praying for each other, having great quiet times. But now I want to talk about the church, loving the church. You know, we are in the final week of our special missions contribution. And I want to lift up the Metro Coast. Um, we have raised a lot of money. Um, in the West region, we have raised over $84,000 for our summer missions. Let's give it up for the West region. And in the Southland region, we have raised over $110,000 for our summer missions. We've blown out our goal by thousands of dollars. Collectively, we have raised $194,000 in the Metro Coast to save souls all around the world. That's awesome. And I believe right now we have a test of our love coming July 14th. Wow, we blew our missions as a super region, but we're still 20% away. We have 80% turned in, 20% away for our missions as a church. And the Bible does teach all for one, one for all. And I want to encourage us to just find it deep in your heart. What can you sacrifice this Sunday? What can you, I know we sacrifice, and God sees it. Hebrews 6.10 says that God will not forget the sacrifice. But don't ever forget who gave you the ability to sacrifice. Don't forget whose money that is. It's God's. And we know that every cent, every dime, every dollar every donation is going to go and help save more souls. So I know come July 14th that the brothers here, the sisters in the Metro Coast, and all the disciples in the City of Angels Church, we are going to blow out our special missions contribution for the Lord. 
opportunity number two for limitless love. You know, I think it's great to see all the new Christians get baptized, and it's great to see the teens, like another teen get baptized. Isaac got baptized, which is awesome. Um, and I, I really want to encourage us here. I think at times we could have the campus, the singles, the teens, the marrieds. But I really want to encourage us to really have a limitless love for all the ministries. And the young guys, really, I want to encourage you guys to get to know the older guys. <laughs> and I know sometimes the older guys maybe see the younger guys, and let's just be honest, some of us could be sometimes a little prideful and arrogant. Uh, <laughs> and that reaction right there proves it. <laughs> um, but we want to encourage, we, there's so much wisdom in this room. So much wisdom in this room. And I want to encourage us to really go after the older guys and get some of that wisdom because a lot of us need it. Now for the more mature disciples. I do think we need, the Bible does say there can be thousands of guards, but we need many fathers. And I want to encourage us, uh, you know, the mature disciples here, to really go after being fathers. And how can you be a father? Invite people over for, for lunch or dinner. I mean, that's the way to anyone's heart. Do a little barbecue for a, for a campus disciple, single, that, it's awesome. I want to encourage you, when's the last time you invited someone over for dinner to show love to a disciple? And I believe if we go after this summer and have a bridge of love, it, it takes two to tango, you know what I'm saying? We, we, I don't want a new and old, there's, I don't want no divide there. I don't want, oh, there were the, 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 old, the new guys, no, no, no. We got to have a unified, loving church, and that's going to give glory to God, Amen. A third opportunity for limitless love, loving the lost. You know, I, it's, it's so amazing to see what God has done. But I think right now we really got to get focused that we are perpetually on a mission team. The Bible says in Luke 19, verse 10, that God came to seek and save the lost. Therefore, the body of Christ is here to seek and save the lost. And with a membership of almost 240 disciples in the Metro Coast, this week we reported 62 studies. I know it's the summertime, but for me, when the, when the Bible says the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few, it doesn't change in the summer. <laughs> That's just me. I don't know how your Bible reads. I don't know if you have different versions for the summertime, wintertime, but my Bible says that it's always plentiful, the workers are few, and I think right now a lot of us have to love the work. And I want to encourage us here. To get that study count, because what is that? The numbers are not just numbers, guys. These are souls. And every single one of us at one point was a part of one of those numbers. And thank God someone shared with us. I want to encourage us by this time next week that the Metro Coast gets to over 150 Bible studies. And I believe that's going to allow us to see more souls be saved. Amen? You know, I love the month of July. I, I think of, um, you know, almost eight years ago, uh, I was baptized into Christ. In July, on July 31st, 2016. And the person who reached out to me was Christian Enos, who's our leader over there in Salt Lake City. And we met while we were interning at, in the Bay Area, I was a mechanical engineering intern, he was an economic intern. And he told me after the fact, after I got baptized, that he went on a personal campaign to share with 50 people a day in the summer at work. And I was one of those 50. What if Christian didn't do it? What if he said it was the summertime? Let me relax. I wouldn't be here. I want to encourage us. Who's going to be that brother? To have limitless love in their heart for the loss. And say, I'm going to go in a per Forget my, I'm not going to tell my leader to tell me what to do. I'm going to have a conviction in my heart. And have let the Spirit of God fill me up and have a love for the lost. And go on a personal campaign to save souls in my workplace, save souls in my neighborhood, save souls in the West, save souls at UCLA, at USC, wherever it may be, in the Southland, save souls all around the Metro Coast. Who's going to be that brother? I believe I'm looking at a group of people, a group of men who will go on that campaign and save the world. Amen. Last quick point, limitless discipline. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 24. You know, the 
2 Timothy 1, that passage can also, it's better translated as sound mind. So we're talking about having a sound mind here. Mental discipline. We're going to look at Joash here in verse 17. Actually, let's read, let's read verse 1 of 2 Chronicles 24. 2 Chronicles 24, in verse 1, it says, Joash was seven years old when he became king. He reigned in Jerusalem 40 years. His mother's name was Zibia. She was from Beersheba. Joash was right in the eyes of the Lord all the years of Jehoiada the priest. Let's drop down now to verse 17, or verse 15. 2 Chronicles 24, verse 15. Now Jehoiada was old and full of years, and he died at the age of 130. He was buried with the kings in the city of David because of the good he had done in Israel for God in his temple. After the death of Jehoiada, the officials of Judah came and paid homage to the king, and he listened to them. They abandoned the temple of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and worshipped Asherah poles and idols. Because of their guilt, God's anger came on Judah and Jerusalem. Although the Lord sent prophets to the people to bring them back to him, and though they testified against them, they would not listen. Then the Spirit of God came on Zacharias and Jehoiada the priest. He stood before the people and said, This is what God says. Why do you disobey the Lord's commands? You will not prosper because you have forsaken the Lord. He has forsaken you. But they plotted against him by word of the king. They stoned him to death in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. King Joash did not remember the kindness Zacharias' father Jehoiada had shown him, but killed his son, who said as he lay dying, May the Lord see this and call you to account. Wow. What another sad story. So many warnings in the Bible. Romans 15 said we can learn from the past. And over here we have Joash who started off right while his discipler was alive. But then once his discipler leaves, his mind leaves. And he loses his mind and he stones and kills his son. And leads all of Israel to transgression. What does that teach us? Joash and his convictions relied on Jehoiada the priest. He did not have a sound mind himself, but was having, like what we were teaching before, borrowed convictions. How about you tonight? What happens if your disciple leaves? I know some of us maybe, you know, but there's been transition in the church. You now you have a new discipler. Do you still have the same convictions from the scriptures? Or some of us, one day we're going to be sent out and we're going to be tested. Do we have convictions in the scriptures? And really what we see over here, he loses his sound mind because he did not trust in God. He put his trust in people. You know, Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you, trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord himself is the rock eternal. What leads to a sound mind? It's trusting in God. That leads to mental discipline. But if you don't trust in God, you're not going to have a mental discipline and follow what the Lord says. And really, we got to see, where in our hearts tonight where you don't trust God? Is it in your finances? Is it in your dating life? Is it in just whatever aspect it may be? we got to trust in God. God created the whole world. God keeps the deep of the seas, the highest of the heavens. God created your soul. He knows every single hair in, on your head. Some is a little less, some a little more. God, God knows everything. We got to trust in God. It's going to lead to a sound mind. And, you know, it's, it's amazing just to think about the first time you trusted in God. Remember that time when you studied the Bible, made a decision to trust God and how scary it was? I remember, man, just thinking about it. You know, for me, when I got baptized, I was going to school two and a half hours away from the church. And I had to trust God. What am I going to do? Made a decision to buy a bucket of a car, driving back and forth, risking my life on the I-5, and going to school two and a half hours. I remember one time someone asked me, like, why are you doing that? And I just simply said, I love God. And we know what 2 Corinthians 5 says. If we are out of our mind, as some say, it is for God. If you're in our right mind, it is for you, for Christ's love compels us. You see, when you tap into that limitless love, it's going to lead to a limitless mental discipline. And really, we got to have a conviction here. We have to love the Lord. 
and make a decision to trust him. I want you to write it down right now. Where don't you trust God? What area of your life where you don't trust God in? And I believe we go to the scriptures and study it out. You're going to see that it is foolish and prideful to not trust in the Lord. God has a perfect plan for every single one of us. Don't get in the way of it. Well, I hope tonight we learn from these three tales. A tale of three kings, kind of a remix version. Looking at Uzziah, looking at Joash, and looking at Solomon. And I believe tonight if we just tap into the Spirit of God, tap into that limitless power, tap into that limitless love and that limitless discipline, we're going to see God in quarter number three and quarter number four prove the scripture true in Ecclesiastes. The end of the matter is better than the beginning. Are you ready for a greater end in quarter three and quarter four over here in the Metro Coast? And it's going to be amazing if we tap into the limitless spirit of God. And to God be the glory.